This is an iPod, and for the last 14 days, it was my sole device for listening to music to. Let's start with the rules. Rule number one, no music streaming service is allowed. So this meant saying goodbye to Spotify for two weeks. Rule number two, I'm not allowed to use my AirPods because they don't work with the iPod. And finally, rule number three, I can only listen to music that I own either physically or digitally. I found myself being on social media a lot more than I would like to simply because there wasn't really much going on in my life. But it wasn't my mental health alone that was being affected. It was also my attention span as well. Sometimes I would spend upwards of like tens of minutes just finding the right song to listen to. It was at that point that I remembered that I had an iPod laying around in my cabinet. Maybe this thing would help fix my attention span and bring me back from my constant pleasure seeking mindset. I mean, it's only two weeks, so couldn't be that bad, right? Day one just so happened to coincide with the opening of Apple at the Exchange TRX. It's the first ever Apple retail store to open in Malaysia. And what better way to celebrate this historic moment by bringing along another product that was revolutionary. My first impression of using this thing on the train were honestly pretty positive. Although it's made of plastic, the device feels weighty and premium. There's no part of it that feels cheap. And you would hope so because this 30 gigabyte model that I have here retail for $300. $49 back when it was released in 2005. That's equivalent to $562 in 2024. But arguably the most fun I had using this device was with the way you navigate the device. Just looking at the device itself, it seems like it would be really hard to navigate. You see this little circle in the middle? That's not just a button, that's a touchpad. And in order to go forward or downwards, you just swipe your finger in a circular motion clockwise to go backwards or up. You just do the opposite. I can't tell you how much fun I had just scrubbing my fingers on this device. I think on the first day, I probably spent like a couple minutes just navigating the iPod. This touchpad interface makes it so much more fun to use compared to using Spotify or whatever on your phone, but perhaps in the most Apple way possible. They went on and added a little feature that may not seem like a big deal, but it really made the experience much more tactile. If you have a modern smartphone, you probably noticed the haptic feedback while using the device. You know, the little taps and vibrations that you get when you type on your keyboard or when you're switching apps. But what if I tell you that the iPod had something similar but 20 years earlier. When you scroll on the iPod, it emits a little clicking sound that mimics haptic feedback. In the grand scheme of things, it really isn't that big of a deal, but it's just one of those little things that really add to the experience of using a device like this. As for audio quality, I didn't really have much to complain about. I'm not an audiophile, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. But other than it sounding just a little bit muffled, I really didn't have many problems with the audio to be honest. However, the same could not be said about the earbuds. I have had a very long history with the Apple EarPods. I'll go into detail later in the video, but long story short, they're not great. But aside from that, the experience in general was honestly pretty good. I had no problems with the song selection at all. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that for the hour and a half that I was standing in line just to get in the store, I was just listening to music on this thing. The store itself was absolutely beautiful. Probably the best designed Apple store I've ever been to in my life. This layered roof design with the central Oculus was apparently only exclusive to this Apple store. And I was told this by an Apple employee but it's supposed to resemble a jewel if you look at it from above. But yeah, enough glazing about the Apple Store. What was the battery life like on this iPod? It was average, I guess. I used it for around two and a half hours in total for the first day. And after that, the battery had dropped by around a third or so, which means that it probably lasts around eight hours or so in total for a single charge. It's definitely not great battery life, but to be fair, this thing is like 20 years old, so I wouldn't be surprised if the battery has already degraded. Now I've shared all this information about what it's like using this thing, but I haven't answered why I chose it in the first place. 
For me, the iPod symbolizes something special. Not only is it the best selling music player ever made, it also is the de facto music player. Regardless of what music player you used, people probably just called it an iPod. But how did it become such a cultural phenomenon? See, back in the early 2000s when the iPod had just released, we had just come off of a transitionary phase. The decade prior, people were listening to music on these little devices called the Walkman. And while they were great, they had just one small issue, which was the music selection. Because you had to bring individual cassettes with you, you could only listen to so many songs at once. So to solve that problem, a company called Sai Han Information Systems released the first ever MP3 player called the MP Man F10. And it came with two storage configurations, 32 megabytes and 64 megabytes. And after this, a couple other MP3 players were released, but they all had the same issue. They all had around 32 to 64 megabytes or so, so you could only really store 7 to 20 songs at once. I think it's pretty obvious why no one talks about them anymore. They were bulky, they weren't intuitive to use, and most importantly, the storage meant that it couldn't really store that many songs at all. But Apple had something else in mind. On October 2001, they released the first ever iPod. And compared to the rest of the competition, well, there really wasn't any other competition. It had a sleek, minimalistic design, it had a very intuitive user interface, and most importantly, it had a lot of storage. Compared to other devices, the iPod had 5 whole gigabytes. This is a lot of storage to store songs even nowadays, especially if you're just storing them as MP3s. And they achieved this by using a tiny little hard drive that Toshi Shiba invented instead of using flash memory. But I'd argue that it wasn't the iPod alone that changed how we listen to music, but there was also a little piece of software called iTunes. Now some of you might not know what iTunes is. Nowadays it's considered an ancient relic, but back then it was revolutionary. It's essentially like Steam, but for music instead. Not only is it far more convenient to use because you don't have to worry about downloading Michael underscore Jackson dash beat dash it dot mp3 and have it turn out to be a piece of malware. It was also just easier to use because at a glance you could see a ton of artists and album covers and all that. But another great feature of iTunes was that you could buy songs individually for 99 cents each. And that's essentially what I did for this challenge. I got some albums of course, but the majority of songs that I bought were just individual tracks. The promise of being able to store thousands of songs in a singular device was very novel. And the sales absolutely showed. The iPod went on to becoming the best selling music player in history before being discontinued by Apple in 2022. It's a real shame that they no longer sell iPods, so I'm grateful that I have one here myself. The model I'm holding is what is considered a 4.5th gen iPod, also known as the iPod Photo. It's called that because, well, you can look at photos on it. But whilst I had pretty good first impressions of the device, as you'll see next, the following 13 days were not gonna be easy. Remember how I mentioned earlier in the video that the earpods weren't Great? Yeah, not great is probably an understatement. I've heard a lot of praise for how comfortable these things are, which makes sense because Apple switched to this design because it would fit most people's ears more snug. But I'm not most people. Throughout the two weeks, I had two main problems with the earpods. One was fit and second was the cable. Let's start with the fit. It is absolutely horrible. Whilst the right earbud fits pretty snug in my ears, the left earbud refuses to stay in for more than like 5 minutes. Now 5 minutes is pretty good all things considered, if you know what I mean. But I'd like to have it stay in my ears for more than 5 minutes. I tried wrapping them around my ears but that didn't work. I tried shoving them even deeper into my ear canals and obviously that didn't work either. Regardless of which ear it was, I found that around 10 minutes or so, I would start feeling pain in both ears. Now imagine all of this but apply it to a gym scenario instead. No matter what workout it was, these things just refuse to stay in my ears. And this leads me to the second problem, which are the cables. Now I know there's some freaky ass people out there that like being yanked, but I'm not 
one of them, especially not when you're working hard on a set and then suddenly your cable just catches on to something else and then your head just suddenly like gets yanked in a different direction. I can tell you how many times that happened throughout this entire challenge and it was so frustrating and I lashed out so many times at the gym. And I know I'm complaining a lot, but I really hated the ear pods which is why on day 12 i gave in and just bought these things instead these are what we call in-ear monitors and essentially they're just fancier earbuds i only got to use them during the last day of the challenge but i can't begin to tell you how much better these things were compared to the ear pods audio quality was significantly better they were way more comfortable and they actually stayed in my ears even the cables themselves were less prone to tangling they were an absolute treat to use and this is a great segue for me to start talking about some of the positives of the experience. Despite all the complaining, overall I actually quite enjoyed using this thing. Easily my favorite part about it was also the least expected one, which was the song limitations. I'm someone that gets bored of doing the same thing over and over again, so coming into this challenge, I kind of expected to get sick of listening to the same songs around day 3 or 4-ish, but surprisingly, it wasn't until day 13 that I even started to feel a little bit of tiredness over hearing the same thing over and over. I found that by intentionally limiting myself to only a handful of songs, I was able to enjoy the songs that I did have more deeply. See, I've never really been someone who cares about lyrics. Most of the time, I really just like a song because of the music itself. A great example of this was when I was listening to Kendrick Lamar's songs. At first, I was like, yeah, I mean, this guy's songs are pretty catchy, but that's about it. But it wasn't until I started listening to them with more intentionality that I started to really love his songs especially when it came to a song called Count Me Out. I remember I was on a treadmill or something when I was listening to that specific song. I could feel his raw emotions and vulnerability in the song. It's definitely one of his more underrated songs, but it's easily my favorite. It's not only just his songs either. The same thing also applied to some of the songs that I already liked prior to this. I found that every time I was using the iPod with my full attention, it always correlated to more enjoyment. Because when I'm not moving around too much, the quirks of using the whole setup just weren't that big of an issue. And a cool side effect of this is that it also helps in calming me down. A good example of this was during day 10 when I wasn't feeling great. So I decided to just drive to a nearby park and just chill for a bit. I brought the iPod and this little Game Boy that I will elaborate on later. So once I arrived, I just kind of sat there and ate my food while listening to some music. I still remember distinctly that even after I received my food, I was still in a pretty bad mood overall. But after just sitting there and listening for a couple minutes, whilst my frustrations were still there, I felt more calm. And ironically enough, it was because I listened to some melancholic music. There's this indie band from Taiwan called Sweet Sean and they are easily one of my favorite bands of all time and most of their older music is either a little bit sad or a little bit melancholic but for some reason it just worked really well in making me feel more calm so the ipod did in fact work in the sense that it improved my mood but i was still feeling a lot of negativity and had a lot of negative thoughts in my head that i need to kind of just clear off for a bit and that's where this little thing comes into play this is the ambernic rg nano and to put it simply it's it's a tiny device that plays emulated games. Think Game Boy, Game Boy Advanced, you know, those older systems. I started using it after my meal and I gotta say, this thing worked wonders. I think it's just a matter of because when I'm gaming, I don't really have the mental capacity to really think about other things because I'm just so focused on the game itself. But it worked really well and I kind of just sat there and played games for like half an hour and by the end of it, most of my worries were pretty much gone. The iPod set a good emotional foundation for me to be distracted on and then this RG Nano came in and basically made it so that I had to stop thinking about other things. But with that in mind, I essentially just did the same thing over and over again until the challenge ended and here are some of my final thoughts. 
I started this challenge with the goal of claiming back my attention span. So after 14 days, has it gone back to pre-internet era levels? Well, no. But what I can tell you is that it has indeed improved. While I still find myself wanting to put something in the background most times, I found that I can just sit in silence more often now. In fact, during the writing of the script, I spent most of it just writing in silence. I found that most times, it actually produces better results. I'm more focused, I write better, and it takes me less time to finish tasks. The biggest takeaway from this challenge for me, however, was that as a society, we're so obsessed with the freedom of choice and having unlimited options that we fail to realize that is actually what is causing us to be unhappy in the first place. If you're someone who likes learning about psychology, then you've probably heard of an idea called the paradox of choice. Essentially, when we're presented with more options, not only do we take more time to even make the decision in the first place, we're often less happy with the decision that we end up with. That was definitely the case with me and music. There were times where I was either at the gym or just in the car and I would spend upwards of 10 minutes finding the right music to listen to. And when I finally settled on something, I wasn't even that happy with my choice. Contrast that with when I was using the iPod, it didn't really matter what song I was listening to because I would enjoy it regardless. Now, some of you might say that that's because it's a highly curated list of only songs I like, but for me, I'm pretty picky with my music. I like what I like and the rest I just can't really get into. Not only that, the iPod was just more fun to use than a smartphone. Like yeah, our phones can do a lot of things pretty well, but the touch wheel on the iPod just made the experience much more enjoyable and fun to use for me. It's really hard to convey what it's like to use something like the iPod. Like yeah, I can tell you all the pros and cons of using it, but at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is do you have fun using it? And for me, the answer is definitely a yes. It's not something that I would use day to day just because of the convenience factor, but for special occasions, yeah, I could definitely see myself using it. For example, you know, in those older movies where a couple would be listening to the same song while each sharing an earbud. Personally, I've never experienced that, but imagine how cool it would be if I just in the middle of a date whip out my iPod and ask my date if she wanted to like listen to the same song and share an earbud. That's so romantic, but I'm getting ahead of myself again. At the end of the day, do I recommend getting an iPod? If you can find one for a decent price, then yeah, I would say go for it. I'd recommend getting any model that isn't an iPod Touch, iPod Shuffle, or iPod Nano just to get the proper iPod experience. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video. I'm really in a mood to do more of these challenge type videos, so if you have any suggestions on what I could do next, definitely leave a comment down below. But for now, I'm gonna go listen to some more Sweet John because sweet baby Jesus, John sure is the guy of all time. Yeah, I don't even know why I keep doing this. It's not even that funny.